Well, that month went really quick. It's time for another wrap-up. This time, it's the February wrap-up. Hi everyone, welcome back to World Reads. Welcome back to another video. My name is Dave. And welcome back to another wrap-up. This is my February wrap-up. Bit of a mixed bag in terms of February reading. The month started off very well, and then we had a very busy week in Yorkshire, which I didn't really read much at all. So a bit of a mixed bag reading-wise, but I did manage to read six books. Should we do them in the order I read them? Yes, let's do them in the order I read them. So the first book I read in February was Black Sheep by Susan Hill. I'm a big, big fan of Susan Hill, of her fiction, and indeed her non-fiction as well. Now, you may know Susan Hill for her, her ghost stories, of which there might be one in a bit. You may know Susan Hill for her crime series, or you may know Susan Hill for these little atmospheric novellas that she writes, and she really does write them very, very well. This is, is no exception, it's a tiny book. It's only uh, 135 pages, so it was only a day's read for me. It's very atmospheric, it concerns a family. It's a mining family, and this is really about a, a very close-knit family and the way that the mining communities pull together. What it does show is Susan Hill's versatility, because in this book, she draws not on ghostly stories, not on crime stories, but really this story revolves around atmosphere and the way that she can craft an atmosphere to make the book very eerie. Now, Susan Hill's style is very, very easy to get into. She's written a, an awful lot of books. Her writing style is very simple. It's very easy to get into. I very much enjoyed this book. So that's Susan Hill. Black Sheep, and this one is published by Vintage. The next book I read during February was Sal by Mick Kitson. Now this was very kindly sent to me by Canongate Books, so thank you to everyone at Canongate. This is due out on the 1st of March. Fantastic, I absolutely loved this book. Had no hesitation giving it five stars. It concerns two girls, a girl called Sal and her younger sister, Pepper. They've run away from something hideous that's happened at home and they've run away to live in the forest. Now, Sal has, she's clued herself up on this, um, and so she's watched, she's watched loads of survivalist videos on YouTube. She's bought herself a load of equipment using stolen credit cards. They run away from a, a bad home, make a new life in the forest, in the Scottish Highlands, and I think in the Argyle region. So the primary narrator of this book is Sal. It's very simply written, but it's very clever in the way that you actually believe that the, this young girl is, is talking to you through the pages. So it's a very clever piece of writing. And also, they meet a character in the forest. They meet this German lady in the forest that's been camping there for her own reasons. You could almost create another book just centred around this other character that they meet in the forest. It's a brilliant read. I absolutely love this book. I thoroughly recommend that you go and get yourself a copy when it's out on the 1st of March. So that's Sal, written by Mick Kitson and published by Canongate Books. The next book I read was another small book. This was Smut by Alan Bennett. This is two short stories, the first of which is called The Greening of Mrs Donaldson and the second of which is called The Shielding of Mrs Forbes. Now, I didn't really enjoy the first story. It was okay, but it was a bit it was a bit sticky to get through. But the second story is is well worth a read. It's typical Alan Bennett really. It's written completely in his style. Alan Bennett writes in a very old-fashioned way. I appreciate that style of writing because I'm I'm quite old-fashioned myself. So I do like a bit of old-fashioned writing. At times it reminds you of uh, reading PG Woodhouse. It's calamitous, sometimes it descends into farce. But overall, an entertaining little book. So that's Alan Bennett, Smut, two short stories. The third book I read during February was English Animals by Laura Kay. This is published by Abacus. Uh, and the reason I picked this up is because I'd seen it on Booktube a lot. I've seen a lot of big Booktubers recommend this book. And it sounded like my kind of thing. It's It revolves around, for those that have been watching my channel for a little while, you will know that I love books about big country houses. And this book revolves around a big country house. So it's about a character called Merka. Merka is a European immigrant to the UK, but her English is very good and she gets a job 
working for a couple called Richard and Sophie in a big country manor. Richard is, um, how best to describe, Richard's a bit of a chancer, but he's developed a taxidermy business. They take on Sophie, first of all, to do some just odd jobs around the house, and then Sophie develops an interest in taxidermy, and her skills quickly surpass that of Richard's, and she starts getting commissions of her own and starts making a name for herself. Now, Richard and Sophie's relationship is what you would call dysfunctional. This is an absolutely brilliant book and I loved it. I loved the writing was absolutely superb. I loved the descriptions of the countryside. I loved the story. It's just a really thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining read. So uh, no hesitation. Again, I gave this one five stars for a very good reason. It's brilliant and I'm so glad I've read it. The next book I read during February, the penultimate book I read during February was The Small Hand by Susan Hill, another Susan Hill book. This is about a book dealer called Adam Snow and he on the way to visit one of his clients he comes across this very dilapidated old country mansion see can you see the theme here it's another book about a large country house when he's there something quite ghostly happens to him and that carries on throughout the book Susan Hill is brilliant at creating these little atmospheric ghost stories Obviously, she's most famous for The Woman in Black. This one is, is a really, really good one. I read this while I was up in Yorkshire. Well, started this when I was up in Yorkshire and finished it when we got back home. It's a very, very good book. Um, it tells you a little bit about the, the antiquarian book business as well. But it, it's very atmospheric and it's really, really spooky at times. Yes, four stars for that one. That's Susan Hill, The Small Hand. A ghost story. The last book I read during February was Joanna Cannon. Now, if you were a fan of Joanna Cannon's debut novel, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, then you are almost certainly guaranteed to love this book. It is absolutely fabulous. It's a very easy read. And what I found now with Joanna Cannon is because it's a very easy read, it's almost quite deceptive and you find yourself slowing down. This took me this took me about a week to read where and I think I did that subconsciously because I wanted to slow down and take in every little every little detail and every little nuance about this book. Although it's written in a very simple style, just slow your reading down and just soak it all in because it's a fabulous, fabulous book. So it centres around the goings-on at an old people's home, a residential care home called Cherry Tree Lodge. And the two main characters, Florence Claiborne and her friend Elsie, get up to all kinds of mischief, especially when a new resident at the care home presents himself and he looks very much like a character from their past, a shadowy figure from their past. But the thing is, this man was supposed to have died many, many years ago. And so they spend the book getting up to all kinds of mischief, trying to figure out this guy's story and to see if he really is that figure from their past. It's a very, very entertaining read and I wish it all the success. It's already selling in huge numbers and it's an, another absolute surefire hit for Joanna Cannon. I love this book and no hesitation again in giving it five stars. So a very five star month for me, even though I didn't read an awful lot. So a fabulous book, Three Things About Elsie, published by the Borough Press and written by Joanna Cannon. Well, that's it for me. That is the wrap up all wrapped up. I will see you again on Wednesday for another booktube video. Whatever you're doing this week, enjoy your books and I'll see you back here next Wednesday for another booktube video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.